Hey guys, Robert at 3D Printscape. So today I'm gonna to go over some of the basic support settings inside of Orca Slicer. Uh, last week I covered how to get started with the slicer, um, showing you everything from setting up your printer to importing STL files and slicing. Uh, but I wanted to do some more videos kind of covering some of the more common features or functionality that you'll use within the slicer. So this week is covering the supports. If there's anything specific you guys want to see about the slicer or any other videos in general, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, um, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe or interact with the channel in some way, leaving comments or whatever the case may be. Uh, that just helps the video get traction and help the channel grow. And I guess with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so we're here at the computer. I just imported a quick overhang test. Uh, typically, uh, I know this is not printed with supports, um, but because of the overhang, I thought it'd be good to kind of show uh, what the supports can do. Um, also wanted to notice that I have the G-code view turned off, so I'm not showing the G-code here, uh, just so we have better visibility to the supports itself. All right, so the supports, if you go over on the left, make sure that you have uh, advanced checked because it gives you more options. Um, I go, under support and then anything under this category is related to the supports. So first thing you want to do is enable supports and then it gives you four options here. You have normal and tree both in auto and then normal and tree both manual. So with auto if you just select it uh, make no other changes and then slice it kind of gives you what it recommends um, based on the type that you selected. So normal, you can see here, it's building up that normal grid. Um, then you can scroll down and see what it's doing on each one of those. Or if you do tree auto and slice, you got your standard tree. Which honestly, in a lot of the situations, these two uh, are going to meet your needs. Uh, I typically go with tree supports, they work better in a lot of cases with the overhangs or if you're printing smaller parts like uh, any type of figurines or anything like that. Um, one thing to note though is in, depending upon your model, you might wanna select on build plate only. So this stops any supports from being generated on the actual print itself. Uh, this is important if you're printing like a, um, like a fan duct cover mod for like an Ender 3 as an example, where the inside of that uh, the actual print itself is needs to be open for airflow. If you don't check this box, you're gonna get supports in the inside of that and it's gonna block the airflow and defeat the whole purpose, right? But for this type of model, it doesn't really make a big difference because it's just a giant open space. It tries to prevent things from being printed inside. Um, but like if I go back to normal, even with this selected, it's still going to print on here because there's no other way for it to really build this. So if you look here, it's still, Printing. I mean, you can also adjust the gap here, like this bottom layer. Uh, there's settings if you scroll down here uh, to adjust the Z distance and that and the spacing. This makes it easier to break off. Um, but like I was saying at the beginning, most of the time you don't need to really touch that. It just works. All right, then before we move over to the um, manual or custom supports, I wanted to mention this raft. If you add a raft here, it is gonna add it to the supports and to the print itself. So like I added two layers for the raft, you'll see here that it is creating two layers of a raft at the base and then doing both the print itself and the supports on the raft. All right, there's one other setting I wanted to talk about uh, on normal. It also applies to the manual as well, which is the style. So there's grid, snug, or default. A lot of times under auto, it looks the same, at least for normal, but with default, like tree strong versus tree slim, or this is just saying that uh, these are experimental, so that's fine. They change the way that the actual tree is made where you have a giant branch here versus the small one. Uh, hybrid, at least for this model, and slim are pretty much about the same. See, that's a hybrid and slim. See, some small differences, but they're close to the same. It's just building the base around and then building the branches out for the supports. Um, I typically leave it as default. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump over to the manual settings. So if I go to normal manual and you don't have anything painted and just hit slice, you pretty much got all of about nothing here. 
Uh, there is nothing selected to build the supports on, so it didn't add any support. Same thing if I go to tree. Uh, what you have to do, this is more like the custom supports if you come up from Cura. So this is saying, I, I want a support here or support here, and I don't want it anywhere else. Uh, so what you do is you go back over to prepare, and then you want to paint where you want the actual supports to go. So under support painting, which is right here, um, you can select specific areas. So you can do circle, sphere, or whatever. If you want to paint like this whole line to get it similar to how it was with auto, you can go to fill, and this will look pretty much the same way it did as if you just did auto. And then just if you want to change it, just go to erase all. But let's say you just wanted to paint like here in here just to help a little bit, but not have the entire thing built with support. So if I do that and I go back over to slice with our normal settings, um, it's building exactly where I painted. So you can see here, those two spots where I painted, uh, it's building the supports there. Uh, same thing if I go down to tree, there's really no difference because it's just gonna end up being a trunk with branches versus it being uh, the one or the two actual rectangles. So this is building it off of the side and it's giving it support there. Um, I like that it makes these custom supports easy. I mean, it's literally just a couple button clicks. Just go into here and just click where you want the support. So I, I wanna support here, 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 and here. In case you don't want everything kind of supported, but you just want a little bit of assistance, then just go back and slice it and now you're good to go. It's also worth mentioning, like on the autos, well, even on this, it would, depending on where it's painted, you can adjust like what angles you want to start adding the supports at. There's a lot of custom settings in here, like here's the branch angles uh, and all of that. Um, typically, nine times out of ten, I haven't had the need to mess with any of this. I'm either using default with tree slim or tree normal, which gives it mo more of the slim, or if I wanna do a custom support, I'm going into tree manual, just clicking a couple spots where I'm painting and letting it build the supports that way. It just, it, it works nicely for me. So, I mean, like I said, there are a lot of other settings and I think there are some other videos if you are interested in there online that go into those in a lot more settings, but there, you can spend 20 or 30 minutes drilling into each one of these. And a lot of times there's, I just don't see the need to go into that level of detail unless you're getting to, into very specific prints or very specific requirements. Uh, so I think what I've covered here uh, is what you need to know to be able to effectively use Orca Slicer and use the supports. All right, so that covered it really everything you need to know about supports inside of Orca Slicer. Uh, there's not too much to it, at least if you're just looking at what you need for basic functionality. Uh, there are a lot of customization options that I didn't really go into uh, just because I don't think they're gonna be used that often. Uh, the base settings work just fine. Uh, being able to use just standard tree supports and selecting where you want the supports to touch uh, helps quite a bit and it's really easy to do. But if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.